Hi and welcome to this Interface Labs video. In this video we're going to be looking at UDFs and finding out a little bit more about them. Now a, user, a UDF is a user defined function and there's some very useful documentation about them available in the developers guide that you get when you install Interface. Alternatively you can go to the docs.embarcadero.com forward slash products forward slash interbase URL and from there you can select the developers guide and if you view section 6 this will tell you about UDFs how to use them and implement them. So what is an interbase user defined function? Well simply put it's a function written in any programming language that is compiled into a shared library. Now if you want to find out about creating shared libraries for Windows and for Mac, then you can have a look at the URL shown. The first section of that white paper talks specifically about shared library development before moving on to some non-interbase related subjects, um, but is still a good starting point. Also, if you have a look in the developer guide, there's interbase specific help around a couple of the things that you need to know around memory allocation and keeping things thread safe. So there's two very simple rules around what a UDF should be. Firstly, a UDF should be a very simple, quick function. And secondly, a UDF should not attempt to directly update the state of a database. The functions that are run should pretty much take the values, do a quick, simple calculation against the values passed in and return a result. At no point should you start trying to update data depending on the result of the values passed in. Now a couple of uh, reasonably general things, but when you're using Interbase and it's a 64-bit version of Interbase, then you need to make sure that any library you use is a 64-bit library. Equally, if you have a 32-bit version of Interbase, then you need to make sure that you use a 32-bit library um, with Interbase. You also need to make sure that you keep thread and memory safe and this is done using the ib underscore util underscore malloc method and to, to get hold of this then you need to use the ib underscore util header file or pass file that's available in the SDK folder when you install Interbase. An example is shown on the screen here. So now we know what a UDF is, let's go create one and we'll do this using Delphi and then once we have our UDF we're going to compile it out for Windows and Mac and see it in action. Now a UDF needs to be put into the UDF folder and we'll see that as we go through. We're going to have a look now at writing a really simple UDF function. So I've created here a new project, a new library. So literally from file, new, other, a dynamic link library. And I've added to this library a unit which we've written here, which has got a, a function called modulo. And that passes in three integer values and a default value and we're going to take value A and mod it with value B to give us the result and the only time we're not going to be able to do that is if value B is a zero we don't want to have a divide by zero error in which case if it's zero then we'll return the default value um, back so you could pass in minus one or you could say well we'll just put it zero if it's, it's zero so very, very simple function written in straightforward code. Now the only thing that we do need to do is we need to make sure that for cross-platform compatibility we have the exports clause in the same unit as the actual function. So hence we have modulo in here and then we're exporting modulo within the same unit. And quite typically in the past we've had exports have been in the actual main file 
but we're going to put them into the actual specific unit rather than the DPR. And the other thing that we need to do is on the Mac there is a naming convention for functions from methods that are exposed that they have an underscore at the start and uh, we need to maintain that to make everything work on the Mac so we have this uh, little if def here which gives us a prefix to go on the start of the module name but that gives us our really straightforward code for producing a, a standard library and if we go and build this we can build it here for Windows and for Mac. And uh, what we need to do now is we've got our module. We need to now go and make sure that it actually is in the UDF directory. So if we go and have a look in our Embarcadero interface UDF folder. And we can see here I've got it set to automatically compile out to that path already using the project options. But we can see our demo udf.dll is here. And that file is um, the library that we now need to go and reference in Interbase. So if we open up IB console and on the employee database, I've already been in, we have external functions here. And we have one for modulo, so we've said we've got a, a function. Now for SQL, I'm going to call it f underscore modulo, so I can reference it. And it passes in three integers, and it returns an integer by value. And the entry point, so the function name within the library, is modulo. And the module name is demo UDF. So if we have a look over here, we can see demo UDF, that's our module. Um, so that all references through. Now what we can do is we can um, we can edit that in here if we need to make any changes to the to the parameters. Now once we have that written, we're able to go and reference it in code. So let's go and have a look at the department table. And if we select, let's have the department number, the manager number, and if we do f modulo. So this is now our external function and I'm going to just pass in these numbers because I know they're some uh, integer numbers from department C. We can now see that when we have a null being passed in, if we just pull the SQL back up, we're getting our defaults so when it's a zero that we're dividing by, we're getting our minus one, which is our default. And 600 divided by two, um, modulated by two, there's no remainder left over. Um, 185 gives us a module of 15. So we've got a really good new function now within our SQL that we can use. Now we can do the same thing if we just keep this statement here. We can do the same thing on the Mac. And I've got a link here to my Mac and to the employee database. And I've already been in and um, registered F modulo. And you'll see the only thing that's slightly different here is the module name. Um, as I compile up for the Mac, it's actually given me a, a slightly different uh, name by default. So I could you know, re-change that within the, uh, the file, but I'm just going to keep with the, the standard. And um, here, we now have our, our definitions across and this is now a, a database that is on the Mac so we need to make sure that, that file is on the Mac as well um, so as we go and compile we can use the deployment manager here to send the file over to the Mac using PA server and you'll notice that there's also this um, redistributed file that is created this libcgunwind um, .1.0.dilib. Now that file is actually required by any library that we create for the Mac. So if we go and have a look in our Mac and let's actually go and have a look at Finder. I'm going to go to Applications 
to interface to the UDF folder. I've copied in my DLL into here, my lib demo UDF, but also into the library folder here, I've copied in my libcgunwind.1.0.dilib. Now the library folder is a folder that's available uh, as part of the path for interbase. So because the UDF requires it, we need to put it into one of the specifically pathed folders and popping it in the UDF folder is actually, uh, strangely enough, part of the core path. So we add that into the library folder or into the bin folder and our UDF is then available ready to work. So if we just pop back here, we can connect across and on the Mac we're able to run the same code and get the same result.